Hi friends, it's Allison, uh, the self-proclaimed priestess of Wonderland, and I am here to uh, talk about a or do a review of the Sacred Hags Oracle deck. Um, this deck just came out this year in 2021. Um, I believe it was earlier in the spring, and I wanted to really take my time and work with it before I actually talked about it, even though as soon as I got it, I was so excited to talk about it because this deck has like reawakened and inspired me to have a more spiritual connection to all of my decks, which I mean, all of my decks I treat very respectfully. I never leave them laying around. They have their nice little home where they stay. And I like, it's one thing, like I am I'm a pretty messy, sloppy person, but the one thing in my life that I'm able to really take care of and uh, treat with the utmost respect and care are my Oracle and my Tarot decks. Um, but however, this deck inspired me to really make a deep connection to not just this deck, but inspired me to make a connection to all of my, or reconnect and rekindle my relationship with my other decks. So I will be doing a whole series of reconnecting to my decks. But like I said about this one, I really wanted to take my time. And so I'm going to take really take my time on the rest of them as well. So the Sacred Hags Oracle is written by Daniel Dulski, and it's uh, illustrated by Janine Hausman. Both of these women seem like the most incredible people that are really just taking their craft and bringing it into the world in the most authentic, wild way possible. Uh, Danielle Dolsky wrote uh, The Holy Wild. She has a bunch of other books too that I can't wait to dive into because if you've ever read uh, um, The Women Who Run With the Wolves, uh, that deck like reawakens in uh, this wild woman within all of us in the divine feminine, uh, the Holy wild by Daniel Dolsky does that as well. So I highly recommend it for everybody. It's one of those books that you can come back to over and over again. And this deck is proving to be one of those decks that you are going to work with for the rest of your life. And each time you work with it, it's going to be like something magical and different than it was the last time you did it. So, uh, the guidebook itself is really, really nice and thick. Uh, the box it comes in is really nice. Uh, the um, book fits right in there, and then the cards fit in there as well. So it's a really nice box, and just it's kind of nice to just... Uh, I usually don't keep the book with my decks. Uh, I keep my book separate, but this is one that just is kind of nice to, like, uh, pack up with you, especially if you're going on like a soul retreat or a quick getaway by yourself or even just like a walk through the woods. And uh, this is just a really nice compact way to bring uh, a lot of information with you, um, but still travel lightly. Um, even if you're not physically going anywhere with this deck, it will uh, etherly <laughs> take you to another place, I promise. So, um, the book has a lot of really wonderful opening rituals to as a way to connect to your deck, uh, which was one of the things that really inspired me to really dive deep with this deck as well as my other decks. It has uh, example card readings. Again, they are really in-depth and kind of different. I mean, most Oracle decks come with sample readings, but it's usually they're usually pretty basic. But these are kind of really unique. I love the way... Uh, Danielle Dolsky like spins words like everything that she says even just like one sentence sounds like this whole journey that just like takes you somewhere so that's kind of how the spreads go as well um, the deck itself is separated into four suits so we have the the sacred hags uh, and they are red cards and then there are the seasons and they are green. I will go through every card uh, later, but I just wanted to show you 
Um, and then the next suit are the stories and they are orange. And then the final suit are spells. So there's so many different ways that you can work with this deck. You can work with each suit individually. You can pick one from each suit or you can just mix them all together and then have this like totally different reading. Um, everything about it is just like so unique and so much fun. I feel like they had a lot of fun making it and uh, the collaboration between the two of them is just like phenomenal. I, I can't say enough good things about this deck. Um, so we will, uh, take a moment to go through all the tag. Oh, I wanted to show you that, um, this deck really inspired me to, uh, connect with my, these are my two grandmothers here. Uh, all the jewelry on the frame are from, uh, my paternal grandmother. Uh, I've also have some skulls, which are really great for connecting with your ancestors as well as scolocyte. And I have a new episode of Let's Get Stoned on Scolocyte. It helps you connect to your ancestors and uh, dive into that video. I'll put the link in the description if you wanted any more information. But uh, as for now, let's dive deep into these cards. Okay, so here we are looking at the first suit in the deck, which is the grandmother, um, the Sacred Hags. Um, all of the images on here are of the beautiful grandmothers. And one of my favorite uh, spreads that she has you do is called the Trusted Crone Encounter. And this is where you only pick a card from the Sacred Hags suit and uh, you envision that grandmother or grandmother energy sitting in front of you and speaking to you words, words of wisdom. And it's just such a beautiful practice to do with just this specific suit. And um, I don't have living grandparents or uh, any elder people in my life, so it, it's just a beautiful, beautiful thing to be able to imagine that one of these beautiful sacred hags is speaking to you and giving you words of wisdom. So each card description uh, has three different sections as well. Uh, one of them is Grandmother Speaks, and then there's a morning ritual and a evening ritual for every card. So. Uh, the Grandmother Speaks section is kind of like the description of the card, and uh, then there are morning and evening rituals, which I love so much. So you're able to work with this, these cards on a daily basis, as well as um, just for uh, regular divination purposes. Uh, here we're moving into the stories cards, which are the orange colored cards, and they um, these cards ask you to consider the epic novel of your life, the lessons learned, the challenges met, and the characters loved and left as a fleeting lens through which you might look at and glean greater, greater understanding about the next chapters, the coming steps on your unique hero's journey. So the last suit is the blue of the, are the blue cards, and they are the spell cards. They are considered medicine cards, and they show you what state of being or symbolic action might you hold right now in your life. Um, they a lot of the daily and evening rituals also have things that you recite on a daily basis, kind of like an affirmation, but they are uh, longer paragraphs type of things that 
are meant to connect you to the cards and enchant your journey deeper. Okay, now that we've taken a closer look at all of the cards, I hope you kind of get the feel for the energy of the deck and uh, hopefully be able to tell whether or not this deck is something that you feel drawn to or called to work with. Um, one of the interesting things that I have learned working with this deck was obviously the connection to ancestors. And it's been a really important healing modality for me to connect to my ancestors during uh, the whole year of 2020 and during uh, as we continue to make our way through this pandemic because it's so important to remember and almost kind of relieving to remember that our, our ancestors went through so much more than we are going through right now and their strength and their courage and their perseverance can guide us through this time and help us to keep going and remember that they are always right here um, tapping you on the shoulders, saying, get, like giving you strength and courage. Like, I'm here to support you. Everything that I went through is so that you could have a better life. And uh I know this is a hard time for everybody and I don't take that lightly at all. I'm not trying to diminish anyone's experience, but knowing that your ancestors are there guiding you and have been through similar, if not more difficult situations than what we're going through right now, um, they're here to support you. You're never alone. You always have someone with you. And another really unique experience that I've had working with the cards um, was uh, communicating with my future self, my what would future Allison with all of the lessons of my specific experience, uh, what advice and courage um, can myself give to myself? Um, that has been a really interesting thing to process and kind of imagine and go through. I, in meditation, I physically had an older woman come to me and it, she looked like me. I think she was me. And, uh, that kind of gives me, uh, relief knowing that, well, Hey, I, at least I make it to be that old. <laughs> at least I didn't die young. Like I always thought that I would just for how reckless and wild I tend to kind of be at least in my younger years. So um, that's a really interesting thing that I, had. I uh, connected with my older self, my future self. And uh, it also helped me connect with not only the lineage of this lifetime, but also the lineage of other lifetimes, which has been really healing for me as a uh, someone who is getting older and does not have children. Uh, I've kind of had this uh, sadness and grief that goes along with that and uh, kind of re thinking like, well, I'm, I'm the end. I'm the last one of my lineage, but that's not true because I have lived other lifetimes and had uh, children and grandchildren in other lifetimes and they are also always with me and to remind me that just because I'm not experiencing being a mother in this lifetime, that I have had other lifetimes where I was a mother and I can be a mother, I can still be a mother in this lifetime without giving birth. And uh, I, I know that I'm not alone in this uh, grief and sadness that you may feel around um, whether or not you decide to be a mother in this lifetime, but know that we all have that divine mother within us and we all have the divine mother looking out for us and we all have the divine grandmother and the sacred mother looking out for us. I highly recommend this deck. If you feel called to it, get it. Don't hesitate. Uh, it's going to be extremely healing and uh, worth every penny and every, every second that you spend connecting 
and doing the deep rituals. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope uh, you got the uh, vibe of this deck and know whether or not it's right for you. And I hope you enjoy it. Thank you so much.